we want to find the area of the region enclosed by the curve given by the parametric equations x equals t minus t to the fourth and y equals t minus t to the seventh when t is on the closed interval from zero to one. We want to use Green's theorem to determine this area. So the first thing we should recognize is that the area of a region in a plane is given by this double integral where we'd have the double integral over the region r of one differential a. So if we recognize that this will give us the area of a region r in a plane, then we want to explain why this is equal to this line integral here, where we have one half times line integral along the curve c of negative y differential x plus x differential y. If we can explain why this makes sense, then we'll understand why Green's theorem can be applied to determine this area. So again, first recognizing that this double integral would give us the area of region r, and then comparing this to Green's theorem shown here, if we want this double integral to be equal to this double integral, the first thing we want to recognize is that we would need the difference of these two partial derivatives to be equal to one. The next thing to notice is looking at the line integral, because we have negative y dx plus x dy, the vector field f would have an x component of negative y and a y component of x. So if we determine the partial derivatives using this vector field, notice the partial of q with respect to x would be one, the partial of p with respect to y would be negative one. So the difference of the two partial derivatives doesn't give us one which we want, it actually equals two. And this is where the one half comes into play in the formula. Because one half times two equals one, this is where we get our formula, the area is equal to one half times line integral of negative y dx plus x dy. Again, using the vector field shown here, the difference of the partial derivatives gives us two, and because we need a one as the integrand function, we have this extra factor of one half here. Now before we apply the formula though, we do want to make sure the curve c, given by the parametric equations, does satisfy Green's theorem. Where for review, the curve c must be simply connected piecewise smooth curve with a positive or counterclockwise orientation that encloses a region R. Remember, if the curve C is a positive orientation, then the region R would always be on the left of the curve C. And I've already checked this. The curve given by the parametric equations would be traced out in this direction, and therefore it does have a positive orientation. So Green's theorem is satisfied. The curve C is a simply connected piecewise smooth curve with a positive orientation. Before we set up our line integral though, let's go ahead and write down the vector field f. would have an x component of negative y and a y component of x. Let's also write the curve given by the parametric equations as a vector valued function r of t. So r of t would have an x component of t minus t to the fourth and a y component of t minus t to the seventh. We're also going to need r prime of t, so let's go ahead and find that now. r prime of t is equal to, the x component would be one minus four t to the third, and the y component would be one minus seven t to the sixth. So now we know the area is equal to one half times line integral along the curve c of negative y dx plus x dy, and now to evaluate this line integral in differential form, we can also think of this as one half times the line integral of f dot differential r, which can be written as a single integral as the integral from a to b of f of x of t comma y of t dot r prime of t dt. So this is equal to one half times the integral and now f of x of t comma y of t would be, well the x component of f is negative y, which is the opposite of t minus t to the seventh, so that'd be negative t plus t to the seventh. The y component is x, which is t minus t to the fourth, dotted with r prime of t, which we already found. r prime of t has an x component of one minus four t to the third, and the y component is one minus seven t to the sixth. And we have differential t. 
and limits of integration for t are from zero to one. Let's evaluate this on the next slide. And now we'll find the dot product. So we have one half times the integral from zero to one of, we'd have the quantity negative t plus t to the seventh times the quantity one minus four t to the third plus the quantity t minus t to the fourth times the quantity one minus seven t to the sixth. And now we multiply. So here we'll have negative t plus four t to the fourth plus t to the seventh and then minus four t to the tenth plus the quantity. Here we'll have t minus seven t to the seventh minus t to the fourth and plus seven t to the tenth. And now I'll combine like terms. So we'd have one half times the integral from zero to one of, starting with the highest degree terms, we have three t to the tenth, and then minus six t to the seventh, plus three t to the fourth, and the t terms simplify out. And now we integrate with respect to t, so we have one half, the antiderivative is going to be three elevenths t to the eleventh, minus six eighths t to the eighth plus three fifths t to the fifth. And when t is one, we'd have three elevenths minus six eighths or minus three fourths plus three fifths. And then when t is zero, all terms would be zero. So we'd have zero minus zero plus zero. So here we end up with one half times 27 over 220. So the exact area is 27 440ths, which is approximately 0 0.0614. So going back to our graph just for a moment, we just found the area of the region R or the area bounded by the curve C. I hope you found this helpful.